What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.1 beta 1 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. And this comes just over a week after the release of iOS 17. And since then we've also had 17.0.1 and 17.0.2, but this is the next major release for iOS 17. And this is our first look at it with beta one. Now, along with this iOS release, we also got beta one for iPad OS 17.1, watch OS 10.1, Mac OS Sonoma 14.1, tvOS 17.1 and HomePod version 17.1. That is a lot of ones. So taking a look at the size of the iOS update, we have another one in there. It came in at 6.31 gigabytes. So if we go ahead and check out the build number for this new update, if we go down to our general about, the new build number is 21B5045H. So a lot of ones with this update. We did also get a modem firmware update. And oh my God, I did not even notice this before. I did not plan this. It's 1.11.00. And also I think this is new right here. So look at that little notification that I just got right there, that little alert that looks new in 17.1. So that's the first thing changed. And I didn't even notice that until I started recording. So anyways, let's talk about what else is new here in iOS 17.1 beta one. And the first thing is actually on the lock screen. So if we go to our lock screen here and go to customize it, you will notice that if we tap on the three dots right here, we have a new option for extend wallpaper. So before in iOS 17, you would only get a pop up when you started cropping and scaling the wallpaper so that there was this blur up top, but you never had a toggle to turn that off. So now you'll notice that when you do that, it automatically selects extend wallpaper. And if you deselect it, watch what happens. It kind of just goes back to its normal state where it's not scaled up. And this also applies to contact posters. So if you go into a contact poster and you start moving it around and you want to get it back to its default state, you can tap on those three dots right there. And we have the option for extend poster. Again, it's enabled by default when you scale it, but then you can kind of revert back to original by deselecting it. And then it goes back to turning gray. Now we also have a pretty big change in the music application. So if we go into music and you go to a now playing screen of any song, you will notice that we have a new option there, a little star, and that is favorites. And you can see a really cool animation there when you favorite a song. So this replaces love. So if you go to the three dots right there, you'll notice that we no longer have the love option. It is now favorite. And you could also undo the favorite right there with a new glyph icon next to it. So when you press favorite on one of these songs, which by the way, this does also show up on the lock screen. So if you start playing music and you go to the lock screen, you will notice that we do have a little favorite button right there and you can press on it. So you can favorite or unfavorite straight from the lock screen as well. So once you favorite a song and then you go into your library into playlists, you will notice that up top now we have a filter button before that was just to filter your playlists. So if you go to that on iOS 17.0, you can see you were only able to basically just select title recently added all of that. But now in 17.1, one, you get a new all playlists option and also a favorited option. And this is more of like a filtering system now, whereas before you kind of just were able to sort it by which playlist you want in there, but they kind of all showed up all the time. But now if you select favorited, for example, you can see that it's more like a filter system. So it says music you favorite will appear here. And then you get the option to turn off filter if nothing is showing up for those results and also turns red right here when it is active. If we turn off the filter, you can see it goes back to normal. So this is kind of buggy at first because I favorited a few songs and they just are not showing up in here, but they will eventually. And also if you favorite a song, you will see that when you press on these three dots and then favorite you get that new little pop-up and also to the left of the song we now have this little red favorited glyph and you will notice that they automatically download as well so when you favorite a song it not only adds it to that playlist but it also automatically adds it to your library so yeah a very spotify like feature but i'm here for it i like it and you can see when you favor an artist it shows up top that little star and then also when you search for them it shows the little star in search results as well and if you go to add a song to a playlist you can see a change in the ui here as well so new playlist is now up top whereas before it was just recent and you can see everything is a little bit smaller. The icons to the left here are smaller than they were on 17.0. And then if you go to the bottom of a playlist, you will see that we now have a song suggestions section. And this is really nice. So it uses those recommendations to kind of determine and think about which songs you might like and which songs you might want to add to this specific 
playlist. And you can see you have all these right here. You can add them with a simple press or you can refresh the suggestions to get new ones. So this is super cool. And a lot of these songs I think are actually really fitting for my playlist I have right here. Now we also have a change to the flashlight in the dynamic island. So you guys might've seen a few days ago, I had a semi-viral tweet here where I showed the iPhone 15 Pro having the flashlight in the dynamic island, but the iPhone 15, the regular iPhone 15, not having that feature. Well, that's been changed in iOS 17.1 beta one because now not only does the regular iPhone 15 get that feature, but also older iPhones get it as well. So I just turned on the flashlight on my iPhone 14 Pro and take a look up in the dynamic island. We now have a dynamic island animation for the flashlight to indicate to us that our flashlight is on. And if you have to press on that and to press on the flashlight there, it turns it off iOS 17.1 also brings one of the most anticipated airdrop features. And if we go into our settings general and then to airdrop, you can see that right here, we now have use cellular data when out of range. So it says continue to send and receive content when Wi-Fi is not available during airdrop. So if you're airdropping something and you have to leave the house for whatever reason, you now can continue that airdrop transfer over cellular connection over 5G. Now, also, if you go into the battery settings, there's a new section here that shows how long you were charging other things with the USB-C port. So if you charge like your AirPods or something like that, it will show how much your battery life that specific task took up. Now also the new ringtones have been removed in iOS 17.1. So in iOS 17 over here on the left, we had tons of brand new ringtones that actually sounded really good, but those have been removed here in 17.1 beta one, but keep in mind, there's a couple of reasons this could be. And the main one, the, the most likely scenario is just that 17.1 was built before 17 was released. So I would expect these new ringtones to come back. I guess the good thing about this though, is that all of your custom tones have returned here in 17.1 beta one, especially if you use text tones. If you notice the text tones are all back to, you can choose your ringtones down here. So all your custom ones are back. That was one of the biggest complaints in iOS 17.0 was that it eliminated the custom text tones. Now, one thing I know a lot of people have been waiting on is the journal application. So this unfortunately is not here in iOS 17.1 beta one. Now keep in mind, a lot of apps Apple's big applications like Freeform, for example, came in the 0.2 update. So we may not see the journal app in 17.1 at all. We may be seeing that in a 17.2 update. So just know that it's not here in beta one, and there's a possibility that it's not here at all in 17.1, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Another feature that a lot of people thought could come to older devices is inside of the battery, battery health and charging, and then to charging optimization, where we have the 80% limit. But unfortunately, I did install this on my 14 Pro Max and we do not get that feature. So this 80% limit is just limited to the 15 series along with the battery cycle. So if you go into your settings, general about, and then down here where we have our battery cycles, our cycle count, that is also going to be an iPhone 15 exclusive that is not there on the 14 series or older. Now there's also a new feature in the wallet application here in 17.1 beta one. And this is going to allow you to see your balance for your bank along with a history of your deposits and your payments. So this does include the balances for your credit, your debit cards, pretty much everything. You can see all of that in the wallet app now. Now this is only available in the UK for now, and this is using their open banking API. So we'll see if this comes to other countries, but right now it's only for the UK, but this is a pretty cool feature. And then on the Apple Watch with watchOS 10.1, beta one, you now have name drop support. So name drop now works on the Apple watch. If you want to transfer contact information from your Apple watch to an iPhone or from Apple watch to Apple watch. And then also the double tap feature is in the code for the Apple watch series nine and the Apple watch ultra two. However, it is not active yet. I could not get it to work on my Apple watch ultra two. And if we take a look at the release notes for 17.1 beta one, we do have a few things mentioned, not a lot, but under remote widgets, we do have a resolved issue where it says remote widgets might render blank 
on mismatched iOS and macOS releases. We have a resolved issue for the SK ad network. And then we have multiple known issues for wallet and Apple pay. And then one other known issue down here for the widget kit. And then as far as the performance and the battery life goes, let me go ahead and run a quick Geekbench 6 test to see how the performance is. But my first impressions are that it actually feels really smooth, really solid, it really feels just like iOS 17. I'm not really seeing a big difference in terms of just overall usability and stability. It feels about the same, which is a win for a first beta of an update. So we'll see what we score. So we scored a 2892 on the single core and a 7055 on the multi core. So we're going to see how this progresses over time and how it compares to future betas. And then like I said, as far as the battery life goes, it's too early to tell if battery life is good or bad on this update. But of course, I will let you guys know in future videos how the battery life has been faring on my main device. I'll be running the beta on my main device. And then finally, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So today is Wednesday, September 27th, and I would expect the next beta 17.1 at beta two to come out next week. So usually Apple sticks to a one week release cycle for the 0.1 betas, even starting with beta one. So I would expect to see a second beta for 17.1 next week as early as October 3rd, right there on Tuesday, although it could come out really any day next week. That is my guess. Of course, there are always possibilities of it coming the next week, but my bet is going to be on next week, the week of the second. And then as far as the final release for 17.1, I would expect that to come in October. So most likely the very last week of October, potentially even right there on October 30th. But we'll have to wait and see. Apple did say to expect features like the feature for the Apple Watch Series 9, the double tap. They did say to expect that in October. So I would assume 17.1 and watchOS 10.1 are coming in October. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 17.1 beta one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 17 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.